we're going to call the meeting to order at 6. Um, first item on the agenda is any adjustments to the agenda itself? Yes. All right. Go for it. Uh, request from Steve Murphy to talk about um, the library trustees. Okay. Do you want me to just go ahead and spit it out right now? The whole thing? Uh, I think that that's, we can just decide where you want to put it. Okay. Um, does it matter? It doesn't matter to me. Okay, how about we do that? Um, if you don't care, let's do it right after the, before the recovery officer's report. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll try to be efficient and move through it. Um, so Steve Murphy. And then Diana, you had something that you... Yeah, I thought it would be nice to open the meeting with a little um, report on the uh, town's operations during the uh, exciting eclipse. Would we do that during public comment or right yeah, We could do it right now. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, uh, I'd love to just knock these other things off if we can. Um, Michael, are you okay doing that right after public comment? Whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's great. Um, so if there's no other, no objections, we'll make those adjustments to the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, our first thing is to approve bills and payroll orders. I have to ask, is that supposed to be a motion, or is that... Uh, it could be a motion. It is a motion. Yeah, I guess okay. we, we'll do we uh, approve the bills and payroll orders, and we'll sign them before right. we leave tonight. Is there any discussion? Uh, I haven't looked at them yet, but okay. no. All right, so pending um, uh, us looking at them, they'll be approved. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Um, and then the minutes. Is there a, a motion to approve the motion minutes? to approve the minutes. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from March 25th, 2024, please say aye. 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 The motion passes and the minutes are approved. We sign the minutes too? Yeah. Okay. No, on the back. On the back. All right. Yeah. And then we give them to Robin, and she puts them someplace very important. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll ask if there's public comment. We don't seem to have anybody in the audience, but um, there's no other comments. We can move to okay. Michael and your update right. on the. Sure. So um, the with the eclipse, there became concern. Um, for Nichols Ledge, which is a nesting site for peregrine falcons. Um, and then there was a, um, you know, I had planned on being there anyway, um, but then there was an email from a select board member, uh, Karen Larson from Cadet, um, with concerns. Um, and then um, I got involved, Diana got involved as kind of a town select board. Um, and we worked out a program of closing off the roads up to the ledge um, on the Cabot side and on the Woodbury side. Uh, Alfie loaned uh, some road close signs that we put up um, on the Nichols Pond Road. Um, and just briefly, um, you know, there were a few people that came up, um, and most people that did come were fine with going somewhere else. Um, there was one testy encounter at the last one, um, but that um, was resolved pretty quickly. So um, the peregrines were totally oblivious to what was going on down on the trip. So, so it was a nice kind of Cabot Woodbury um, collaboration. To yeah, yeah, that was, that, yeah, the uh, idea originally came from Cabot through Robin to Robin, and then she passed right. it along. Right. No, I forgot that part. <laughs> right. No, I mean, I'm glad that Cabot thinks that that's an important place for them yeah. to protect, too, even though it's in a wood bear. Yeah. Well, the main road to it is from Cabot, uh, so okay. the town line is right there where the mm. parking area is to the trail. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. So, thanks for doing all that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm. Right. Other yeah. public comments? Hearing none, maybe we'll move to the town clerk's report. 
I'm still doing the recording as it comes in. I uh, called Ashton Allen today. I haven't heard back from him yet to find out if he's got a date when they're going to start up so we can do that floor in the basement of the town office. Oh. Well. Is Ashton uh, Allen, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is that the heating? Um, no. no. He's no. concrete. Stuff he's concrete, right. okay. Yeah. And we've got some bids in for the mowing. And we have one bid in already for the mitigation, however you say that. The local hazard mitigation plan. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Oh, good. But they still have more time on that one, right? They have till the 18th. Oh. Okay, and Kim and I did work in the office yesterday. Mm -hmm. We got out of there just in time because I'll tell you, the traffic picked up at 1.30. Really? Oh, it did. No kidding. <laughs> Did you get to watch the eclipse? Yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. She has a t-shirt. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I can't think of anything else. So I thought this would be a good time. I stuck it in there, but I have the information here to talk about the heating system, it would be nice if we could get that in there before the floor gets done. But, um, Robin, you probably already have copies. Let me copies for you. Oh, you already have copies. Okay. Yep. Um, copy, I sent this all to you, but just in yep. case you can print it out. Yeah. Who wants another copy? Another copy. And Diana, can I, and, and Liz, you and Liz can answer this question for me. The, the concrete in the base of the floor, can you remind me what, I went down, I just can't remember, mm -hmm. what um, Ashton is doing. Skin coating. Yeah, so skin coating. Nice and level. And you'd like that done before the heating system? No, no I yeah. thought it would be nice because the heating system guy said, at least the one, I hope, the one said they could do it, like now this is their slow season. Um, and it would be nice if they, that mess could be done before the guy comes in and makes the floor all nice. But we've been waiting for the floor guy for a long time. Well, that's because the plants are shut down. Right. Yeah. So um, I had sent you a while ago these. Uh, well, this is says Lizzie. What does that say on it? What? It says Robin. Robin. Okay. Here, give me two of these because oh. they have your name on them, so that makes it so important <laughs> or something. The Otherwise, I'd get home and I'll say, I didn't give Lucy hers. So anyways, a few weeks ago, um, I started looking into this. I had no idea how much it might cost because I was getting information from other places that were, was not correct. Um, so we didn't think about going out for a bid because I just started calling people. And I didn't get a lot of response. Gillespie's came right over. Uh, a couple other places. I have notes somewhere. That I called. they weren't really interested if we weren't already one of their customers. Mm -hmm. And then there was Lloyd's. I didn't expect to hear from them because the first time I talked to them, they said, well, we have to have a two-hour window with all of the decision makers there. And I said, well, that's not going to happen. So they, they calmed down on that a little bit, and they managed a one-acre window with Robin and I. <laughs> I mean, one-hour window. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then... We got emails and calls. When could they meet with the select board? They just wanted to set up a meeting one afternoon a couple weeks ago, and we said, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, so finally, they just gave me it in writing. I finally said, can't you just send it? So this is um, pretty uh, amazing, the difference between these two, I think. This Lloyd one, in this Lloyd one, they're recommend, they're estimating that, let's see, the first two are for gas and the second two are for oil. They're estimating that relining the chimney would be $4,216. The guy from Gillespie sort of threw out a number of maybe, what did he say, maybe 1500 mm -hmm. or something like that. Right. So, in any case, uh, the Lloyds came out way more than the Gillespie. And in each case they gave us two different estimates. I think they were based on just a little bit different equipment that they would put in. 
uh, Gillespie's has been our fuel dealer for a number of years. Ever since Brandy started doing the bids every year, I think. They've been getting the bids. And they've done all our maintenance. And uh, I just wanted a chance for us to look side by side. I don't know. I do better with paper myself. But mm -hmm. when I saw these numbers, I said, wow. So, uh, so the one question is, should we, should we move to gas? Which I think is probably a good idea because it, we won't have to line the chimney. Gas is up and down as far as whether it's more expensive or less expensive. And... Um, it is cleaner and it is more efficient, but price-wise, yeah, it's who knows. When it comes to petroleum products, hard to predict. Mm -hmm. So I did not invite Mr. What's his name from Lloyd's to come to our meeting, just to tell us all the things that they would do. I mean, they want to charge us for guarantees. That seems weird. <laughs> and also the Lloyd one doesn't, didn't include the uh, change to the, the well, extral well taken connections. But that's separate here on this Gillespie one, $1,500. So in, the, in Lloyd's first, um, or in their scope, the first one is just a slightly more efficient um, furnace yeah. than, the, than the second. Well, I mean, it's 97%, 96%, 96%, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, but that's presumably the only difference between Yeah, I tried two. to work, go through them word yeah. by word, and yeah, there wasn't a lot. I mean, it's a different model furnace. Yeah. yeah. One is modulating variable speed, and one is single stage variable speed. Mm -hmm. So... And there's roughly... Not quite three thousand dollar difference between those two. <laughs> yeah. Between one and two here, yeah. Mm -hmm. But either one, the first one is twenty one thousand and the second one is seventeen thousand. That's not even considering the chimney part. And that compares with the Gillespie propane switch, which would be nine thousand ninety eight dollars. Mm -hmm. I guess the only question I would have would be how does, you know, Gillespie's Thermo Pride CLQS1 100 propane furnace compare to either one of these Dakin furnaces? Mm -hmm. And it was be would the Lloyd's one be twice as good? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it, not that I don't care about the building or the people working in it, but it is a little building, <laughs> and people working in it are like 18 hours a week, 18 hours a day, week. <laughs> it's not like it's not somebody living there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, but the building is heated. Is it what? It is heated. Oh, yeah, it's heated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. And I'm sure the Gillespie's would. More about the longevity of the machine. What I would be looking at. Mm -hmm. Well, they, neither one of them talked about that at all. Diane, are you looking to get an answer on this today, or would it make sense for us to do a little bit of research on the options? And, you know, I mean, the guy from Lloyd's would be love to come and talk to us, mm -hmm. but it's been hanging on for a while now. So I was just hoping that we maybe we could see. Oh, it's Skip ridiculous. <laughs> Not a comment, really, just a question. Have you looked into heat pumps where you could get both heating and cooling at the same time? We would still have to have a heating system. Well, I understand that. Okay. But have you looked into heat pumps where you could have both heating and cooling in a cost comparison? Yeah. And perhaps as a municipality, you could get a breakthrough efficiency Vermont 
in the cost, the overall installation yeah, cost. It's still well. very expensive and takes a lot of maintenance. So, I mean, that's the, the advice we got from one person who looked at it. I think it would be worth looking into, along with some other stuff too, energy upgrades, some window replacement. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's I mean, totally different. But I mean, if Efficiency of Vermont was coming well, out, look at all of that. Efficiency of Vermont has been to the building mm -hmm. and has done an audit. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, they did a blower door and things like that. They, they recommended that they could pay for doing some um, blown in foam on the walls of the basement. And they did recommend that they could pay for replacing that uh, bulkhead door mm -hmm. if we want to apply for it and go through the problem. I think it's, I think they pay 75% up to $3,000 maybe. I don't remember the details, but. So does it, does it make sense to, because I can, I'm sure you have somebody you can ask, but I'm in, I'm in over my head in terms of like, I don't know, these units. Mm -hmm. uh, but somebody we could ask, I'm sure. Um, would it make sense to just take that amount of time between now and the next meeting I guess to get that information? I guess it's up to you. What about, do you think Derek would be willing to weigh in on he might. any of that? He's family though, so. I'll mm -hmm. just check with him to, yeah. if you can tell me the difference between this furnace and that furnace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I can ask one of the guys at work too. Cool. We'll get as much information as we can. And then, in terms of the heat pumps, is, is it, um... That would be, I, I don't think the, well, for one thing, this is being paid for by the insurance. Yeah. And whatever the insurance out. doesn't pay for, FEMA might pick up the difference. Get, right? And FEMA That's, would pick up the difference. Yeah. Okay. And the difference between your insurance and the, the final installed cost for whatever you're doing to the building. Anything you're doing to the building? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So it doesn't have to just be replacement of what was lost in the flood. If you're doing some sort of mitigation, you know, if any of this work is mitigation, like raising stuff off the floor, you know, yeah, your, right. your basement shelving or the heater, you know, mm -hmm. up off the floor mm -hmm. to mitigate the possibility mm -hmm. of it flooding out again, anything like mm -hmm. that would be picked mm -hmm. up by FEMA. And as I'm learning, uh, you can write for extensions on these projects as long as you have uh, a good enough cause for those. Mm -hmm. And so there's no January 14, 2025 drop dead date for it's good project to know. completion. <laughs> so if you wanted to take a month or so to investigate heat pumps or other types of heating and cooling, you know, you can do that and be somewhat assured that you're not going to lose your place, so Woodbury's not going to lose their place in this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we successfully do write for that extension, that will take the project down for another 30 months. No. So... Can you say that, that thing again? So, the extension to the project, for this particular project, for the town offices, if the extension is granted, then the project completion date would be 30 months <laughs> out. No. Okay. Well, it really shouldn't take that long to do this little bit of work, but it's good to know well, because the bridges yeah. up here, up on the hill here, are not going to be able to get done by January of 2025. I, I doubt, well, at least. So anyhow, that's, from a FEMA standpoint, there's no real need to rush and get this project done by January 25th. As long as we have, as we can mm -hmm. explain satisfactorily to the state and to FEMA that we need this extension of time. Is that? I'm sure Lloyd's would have, be happy to back out heat pumps for us too. So the, 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 heat, the, the current heating system works, right? Yeah. At the moment, yeah. so there's no major. Right. There's yeah. no major rush. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it's a headache. Um, yeah, I just thought it would be clear when you looked at the prices that. That one, the other one is ridiculous, but whatever. for sure, as long as that is a is a is an equitable mm -hmm. unit to one of these, yeah. well, you know, equitable the, or not, not a lot less. <laughs> so easy to ask that question. I, have, I know. I think it would be worth. Um, I know we had the efficiency Vermont audit, um, and there were suggestions um, to improve the um, 
the building as far as you know just holding in heat, um, etc. This mini grant that we'll be doing, I'm going to be doing um, uh, a, a more extensive audit for the town hall, and there might be enough money in that to also include the town office. Um, and I know that there's money uh, from the state, um, from Efficiency Vermont, for um, you know upgrading and improving um, town buildings. Um, so I think that you know if, if we did want to try to, I mean the furnace, let's get it in there. But I think you know with the heat that that's going to create, it, it would be good to have the building tighter. Um, a heat pump would be great for working there in the summer. I remember our select board meetings in that little room on the summer day when the yeah. sun was blasting in the window. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I'm always going to say in the, in the uh, sorry, but in hopes of saving money, no matter whose it is, mm -hmm. some good shades would be a whole lot better what's yeah. there now as far as you know using the shades the buildings only open used in the morning mm -hmm. um having some good well, dark shades and pulling them down when you leave the office in the afternoon is, so if you were doing it at home it would be I a use lot. that building in the afternoon for FEMA meetings mm -hmm. yeah. so it does get warm in that room yeah what i'm just indicating that and there are other other there meetings, other meetings that oh, happen sure. yeah. And the, yeah and the uh the uh <laughs> reappraiser that we're going to hire is going to want an office space, so that's but that won't be till like a year, at least a year from now. So I'm hoping that by that time the basement can be Diana, livable. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, so, in, in terms of insurance, because insurance is going to cover part of this, mm -hmm. will they only cover replacement or will they just cover the replacement of a, a heating system? They would, they said that if you want to add, change anything, we just would have to pay the extra. Okay, all right. Because yeah. it would be a little, a little more expensive to. Uh, it doesn't seem crazy to at least investigate the, the, the ideas of heat pumps and the ability to cool. Mm -hmm. In my mind. No, I agree. It doesn't mean we have to do it. It's you know we could at least just get the information. Mm -hmm. Go for it. All right. So uh, this Michael, is you. Sorry, so you had said it sounded like there might be some money left over in the grant. Um, that's not going to be not something you can use for any hard stuff. Right. No, this I get that. More for but to do an energy like audit. An audit or study sort of thing. That's okay. That's what we would be using that. Okay. For. Here's the. Here's the. Uh, but there's there is money available to help supplement the purchase and of a heat pump. <clears throat> so here's a <coughs> memo, thing for memo from Matt Sharp of Efficiency Vermont back in August. He says. Uh, I have the original quotes from the energy auditor for the hall and the office. Let me know if you would like to discuss those buildings and your plans in more detail. When the time is right, town office, we can support the foundation spray foam and bulkhead door insulation and air sealing, as well as the attic air sealing and adding more insulation. This can happen all at once or in phases. The incentive would be 75% of project cost up to $5,000 when using the certified contractors. It is worth noting that by reducing the energy loss with weatherization, the heating system may have ample capacity to serve additional spaces not currently heated. This, I mean, he wrote this, well, this was after the flood, but it was, uh, I think he was talking about, we had mentioned that we'd like to have more heat in the basement. So there's the out, uh, added option of adding a ductless heat pump to serve the areas that don't currently have a heat source. Um, so he said, I'm available to talk through different options that can be considered. At the town hall, we can support the same type of work as the office, like outlined in the Fitzpatrick estimate with its own 75% up to $5,000. Depending on the scope of work you take on with this project, we can also advise in heating options and incentives that would help with a new heat pump system as well as heat recovery ventilation. If your project was large enough to justify that, or if the, yeah, I don't think we're, anyways. Well, so that's the letter from Efficiency Vermont. I'll, um, 
I'm happy to take on uh, their entity for sure. Um, I'm happy to take on asking around if I can get somebody to come look awesome. at, the, at the space for heat pumps. Um, and then I'll try to get the same guy to uh, at least compare these two. These two. Uh, Francis. Thank you. No. Um, is there anything else in the town clerk's report or the heating system before we move on to the town treasurer's report? Yeah, see, it's past April 1st now. They're sending out late notices for people that have not registered their dogs yet. So they'll be getting a nice little card in the mail. And if it needs to have a rabies vaccination, they'll also state that on there. We only get a hundred and a little over a hundred and fifty dogs registered. Oh, we do have that many. Oh, good. Yeah. About half of what we had last year. Really? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. Brandon, the town treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last two weeks took in, taking in for um, income, cash receipts, $7,398.10. Delinquencies, $985.69. We had two direct deposits from the state. One was a equalization payment for $878 and the re reappraisal payment of $7,463, increasing our Uh, reappraisal fund. Um, payroll the last two weeks, $10,359.01. AP, $23,204.26, and I transferred $15,000 today to cover bills. Can I ask what's AP? You said, did Accounts you? payable. Accounts payable, thank you. Um, so mowing bids. Who well, opens them? You? You know, them? Wow, we got some. So this Thank one here, the reason why it's not in an envelope that came through email. Oh, okay. He didn't read the instructions. Wait, so I'm open one or how are going to do it? I'll do one that's already open. Whoa. So. Shall I begin? Sure. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Dear Town Woodbury, this is uh, on behalf of Five Seasons Land Works LLC. I would like to potentially welcome you as a new customer to our business. We value your support and contribution to our business, and we trust that your experience with our business will bring you the utmost satisfaction. My name is Kyle Chapin, the owner operator of Five Seasons Land Works. I will be assisting you with all the necessary contract details and resources needed to effectively communicate with our business. Please feel free to contact me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are pleased to, we are committed to delivering responsive and excellent service to all our customers. And his proposal is for the town office, $50 a week, park one and two, $50 a week, and the town hall and median strip, $50 a week. Additional work will be billed out at $60 per man hour with a minimum of two guys per hour. Total bid, $2,700, or 540 a month. So 50 a week for those three items, um, but the 540 a month, is that for additional work or? Uh, 
I haven't done the math. $150 a week times four is 600. 600. So he said 540. So maybe he's, I don't know. Is that, uh, and then there's well, 20, he said 2700 for the whole season? <coughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. If the season is paid in full, before the start date, there will be 15% off discount, which will be for 405. And that will be starting? We can put the total good amount for the season at 2295 For the season. All right. 2295 If we pay up front, you said. Mm -hmm. And that, that's five seasons is what? Five seasons and land works. And, it, and there's only three properties that? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this quote is for four properties. Uh, well, they, I mean, they said that the town hall and the median strip as one. Or, oh, oh, as one. And the two parks as one. And the town office as one. Okay. So these, so it's these three right there. I'm not sure about park one and two. I don't know if that is the same. Town hall, or not. park, and what? old store location. What is park one and two? I'm actually not sure. Park one is right here, right down next to the Cabot Road. Yep. And your park two was going to be over closer to the new fire station. Okay, so they're adjacent to each other. Right, not, quite, not, not quite yet, yeah, the yellow house is still there. Yeah. The yep, yeah. okay. Got it. And so that is, is that, yeah. That, so what do we got there? That. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm trying, I'm trying to compare apples to apples. Um, this is $75 per mowing for all town properties. Okay. Um, and then there's a $600. Is this is This is DR property maintenance and law care. And, um, so seventy-five dollars for all, <coughs> all the parks and the town office. Uh, per location, I believe. Okay. Well, exactly what does it say? DR property maintenance and care will provide the highest quality care for four town properties for the town board rate seventy-five dollars per month. No, I guess it's all town properties. Oh. Yeah, seventy-five dollars per mowing for all town properties. Yeah. Okay. They're the ones that have been doing it for the last okay. few years along with the cemeteries. And then there's a $600, um, we'll provide a spring cleanup to all of the town pro properties mm -hmm. for $600. Per mowing. The upfront cost um, for the five season I know it's a, it's a good discount. Fifty dollars for the town. No, just for the just for the if we if the town were to pay up front. Twenty five. No, up front was twenty two ninety five. That's what I did. Right? Yeah. And that I guess that would assume did they um did they suggest how long, like how many mowings that would be? I guess they're making a guesstimate, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we could compare it to that, but I mean, it's nice to have some flexibility sometimes because there are times, for example, in the middle of August, you might not want to mow every week, or in May you might have to do extra. Yeah, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> that it's hard for them to estimate based on yeah. those possibilities. What's yours? Uh, let's see, I've got Tatro's Outdoor Maintenance out of Greensboro Bend. I have an insurance certificate. And it says, bid price, Woodbury Cemeteries, $575 per Wait mile. Wait skip, skip to the, skip to the, to the town. This not one. The, oh, <coughs> yep, sorry, Randy. Uh, okay, four town properties, bid price, $60 per mile and trim. Spring and fall cleanup, eighty dollars per hour. Um, and then there's some phone numbers and address, and it's signed Mike Tatro, outdoor maintenance. So it's 
So last year between the hall and or between the office and the town parks, we paid one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars wow. for those two combined. So we were paying oh that's right, we were paying separately even though the <coughs> cemetery were yeah. using the same people. But and that was correct. with DR? That yep. was with DR? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um have we been happy with them? The cemetery wasn't. Okay. I'm saying that's why they're going out. The cleanup, he doesn't remove stuff. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Like when the, they drop in the. Uh, that was me picking them up every now and then. But yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't haul any debris away. So this one I have doesn't really clarify whether it's $60 per mo for all four properties or whether it's $60 each what does it say exactly it just says four town properties bid price sixty dollars per mo and trim that seems clear to me okay you must be wrong <laughs> i mean it, i thought it was the same way i haven't seen the the, yeah. that, the way the actual rfp went out but uh i think it listed the properties that were to be mowed okay so you're thinking 60 is a lump for all yeah. four okay seems to say um so basically, it looks like five seasons is fifty dollars per mo, or yeah, per mo. So one hundred fifty dollars a week. So it's one fifty per mo because that's per mo for each of per three mo. locations. Oh, all right. They did break it down that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they're one hundred fifty dollars per mo. Yeah. It'd be great. If they all just did it the same way. I know, right? Yeah. So one fifty. Or seventy-five, or, or sixty. Sixty. And then when you do, when you divide that, um, like they that spring cleanup, DR has it as six hundred dollars for the spring cleanup. And if you divide it by roughly eighty dollars per hour yeah. for there, it's about eight hours. They're, they're okay. assuming it's about a day. Okay. So these guys, are, I'm assuming, are also thinking it's about a day. Okay. Robin. Do any of those say how long they have been in business? Mm, I don't think this one does. No. It does not. Did, and, um, now, the cemetery hasn't opened their bids yet, right? Correct. Would have been, so did some of these bid both cemetery yes. and town? Yes. Did they all? No. So, uh, I'm sorry, well, not that I know of because they're still good, so they're just in. Oh, just <laughs> yeah. you would only know if they had it on the envelope or something. Can you say, explain again what the, the um, DR did not pick up last year? It didn't pick up uh, the grass, the trimmings, is that what? Not the trimmings, like okay. branches that fall from the trees, okay. that clean up in the cemeteries, leaf mm -hmm. blowing. Okay. But it was less of a problem at uh, for these town properties, it sounds like. Yes. Okay. My, hmm. I don't know, my suggestion is that we continue with DR property maintenance. Um, five seasons is significantly more expensive. Even though is cheaper. But I don't I, know that the cheapest is always the best option. I don't know anything about yeah, them. Um, I do know that they spelled well with an E, which is, I don't mean to, they I don't it. mean that judgy, but um, <laughs> it's less professional looking than the other two. I did doesn't, hire doesn't Pedro's. Doesn't mean they can't mow along. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally right. <laughs> Just because they can't spell. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. I did hire Petros to do some work at my camp probably four or five years ago, so they've been. They're not um, I, I don't really have a strong opinion, so if. if, if I do know Petros did a walkthrough with yeah. the cemetery, so mm -hmm. wanting to know in detail, and for town property, so. But, oh. And, mm -hmm. and DR already knew. Right. That. So, um, <clears throat> when are the. Cemetery Commission, when is the Cemetery Commission going to open their bids? I have no clue. So, but the deadline has passed, you think, and they're just waiting yes, for... I don't think they're in a rush. No, but I mean for the bids to come in. The date for the bids to come in. There are already some bids there. Oh, so yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, so the, the bid date must have passed. It's just that the Cemetery That's Commission hasn't said. had their meeting yet, right? Correct. Yeah. So is there any benefit uh, to us having coordination with the cemetery? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought there might be, a, if, so, if one of these people got the bid for the 
cemeteries, they might make a better deal for the town. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we asked for, so I guess we can't expect that. Um, um, I don't have strong feelings. I mean, this is definitely less expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see it's insurance. Yep, they sure. have insurance. Mm -hmm. Do the other son certificate of insurance? And we must know DR has it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these five seasons people, I know they're doing a lot of advertising lately. Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to call them myself. Diana, do you have a um, opinion one way or another? No, I guess that the, all things being equal, they have to mow, and DR has not been favored by the cemetery people. So maybe it would be nice to give the cheaper option another chance. A chance. I'm moved that we approve the bid from Tetra's. Um, I will vote aye. Because mm -hmm. I'm not seconding it anymore. <laughs> We're not saying well, We should have discussion. Okay. Any discussion. Okay. okay. If we have a move, then do we need a second? I'll second it. We don't need a second. Is, is no. there any discussion about it? Oh, if, no. All those in favor of approving Tetro's uh, bid to move four properties for the town, three properties for the town. Please add. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Now, if you could pick up some of those, well, oh, no, I guess you don't have to. Do you want these? Pick up all those yes. branches. Yeah, no, that was. Do you want them in the, like, in the envelope of the chemist? Okay. Well, they, they looked at, um, oh, I don't know. Does you said DR was the one that came around and looked at everything? Tatro. No, oh, Tatro did. Oh, one of them said they would. They will do a one defer, uh, one time cleanup in yeah. the spring. Does yeah. that take that was, No, that was DR. Yeah. Tatro did do an 85 per hour for cleanup. 80, yeah. 80, 80 per, per hour for cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, spring and fall. There's always cleanup. Yeah, and then DR was $600 for the cleanup. And so I'm assuming they're both thinking it's about an eight hour day. It's yeah. 600 divided by 80 is pretty close to it. That's a, that's so then we got to ask, is it, is it worth paying them to do the cleanup from all the, brush, all the brush that's falling off the pine tree? Or do you want to pay the highway to do it? Hmm. Hmm. Either way, it needs to be done. Yeah. All, all the brush just fell off the way. There's a bunch of, from the, the, branches, the heavy the snow wall, there's a lot of yep. branches that fallen off yeah. the big pine tree. Into they the took park. the big stuff away, but they left all the little stuff. A little no, no, it's all still there. I thought you took some. No, really? Oh, okay. Well, I was getting ready to, and then we got another foot and a half of snow. And we could hear the whole snow. I was not okay. able to do this. So I don't, I mean, I'm, happy, I'm willing to do it, but. Uh, Let's see. $80 an cost. hour versus. <laughs> well, three times. Average. Yeah, fifty dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> both of you, yeah, probably an hour. So, our two choices are to have him do it or have the town do it. Right. So. I'm happy to get the big stuff, and then maybe they can do the smaller stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So and some of those, some of those limbs are just bigger. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just taking the chainsaw and probably smaller. <laughs> and so, whatever you don't get to, they'll do it at eighty bucks an hour. It sounds like Tatro as well. Sort of Does everybody feel okay about that? I feel okay about that. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Brandy, the next thing is the DLCT audit results. Which I sent out by email to all of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? How did what happen? The fine that we got. Well, if we don't have contracts in place, they want a business card. Certification of insurance. I have to check the debarment list. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do not have a contract set up with anybody who gets mm -hmm. a 1099, mm -hmm. um, that's over a $600 threshold, mm -hmm. that's what they're expecting me to show them. So that, that happened? I do not have that in place, then you get fined. Yeah. And was there a specific case that they, or was there multiple, like more than one? or? Um, it was, this had to do with FEMA. Okay. Yep. And because it goes through the accounting system, it's red flag for a 1099. 
So okay. anybody who's on there that doesn't have a contract. Right. Oh, so, is this some of the people who worked on the town roads right yeah. after the flood? Yeah. Okay, I remember that now. Yeah. Right. Yep. So this is other people other than the town. Yeah, this is yes. other contractors that were hired to do things, but they weren't asked for their... That's my, that, That's why I'm pushing so much that you have to do contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that happened, that people were hired, and or did they just show up and help because it was a flood? And I don't these... know what the circumstances were those two. Oh, okay. Um, but the board, yeah, signed off on the bills. They, it, it was part <laughs> of them doing stuff for the town, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember the town seeing the up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the park cleanup. Yeah. All right. So good to know. So we did contracts. Okay. Contracts. So we hired Tatro. That was like twenty five hundred dollars, right, for that park mm -hmm. cleanup. Tatro. I'm sorry, Dr. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, Dr. Dr. We already had a contract set up right. him for mowing. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. yeah when I do my ten ninety nines, it's not. It's just bundled. Okay. So that wasn't. So it wasn't that one. That it was. I, it was a couple of people who live locally that have volunteered to help out, but at a charge. Oh. Um, and I actually can't remember the conversation. Like I don't remember approving it, although I'm sure we did. But I do remember signing off on the checks. Mm -hmm. that I remember went seeing the payment. Seeing the payments and saying. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's only for services, right? For instance, like for. Purchasing like the sand screen or whatever, we don't 1099 that person for. Oh, yeah, they're going to get 1099. It's for over $600 threshold. For a product? No, no. Yes. So okay. when we buy a truck and stuff like that, but they. No, that's a corporate. Yeah, they're no. corporations, so they. Uh -huh, okay. Well, we got a contract for that. So, like, yeah, all the mowing. Yeah. So, yeah, I can print out. Who received a 1099? Um, but yeah, things should be in contracts. Anything over 600 bucks. That's what VLCT is asking, requiring for me to show them. All right. So what account does that payment come out of? That's a good question. <laughs> out of the general yeah. fund for mm -hmm. miscellaneous expense. Oh, so, yeah. And that fine it wasn't was, budgeted. I can't remember what it was. It was roughly like three thousand something. Yeah, mm -hmm. three grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was an unusual. I wasn't there, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. it was pretty unusual circumstances. Like we we're trying yeah, to put the town back was. together, it and was. like going yeah. forward, that's probably not going to happen as mm -hmm. often because mm -hmm. correct. God willing. Do you, yeah, really do you think if yeah. that <laughs> point was brought up to VLCT, the point that this was directly after the flood, you don't think it would make a difference? Yeah. Okay. They're looking at as a liability. That's all they're looking at. Okay. They're covering us. They want us to cover our bases. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not. Right. There's no swaying. And uh, we don't have any objections. So maybe we move on to the leave for surgery. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I've contacted Skip. Marcus Mani has made it capable so that I can. Um, I'll have my laptop that coincides with my printer. Um, that I'll have at home um, periodically. I'll be checking emails. Uh, Robin is my signer assistant, my only signer assistant. Um, that um, AP or signing checks. Um, payroll, PM is we got to do a refreshery, um, preferably not on a slight board morning. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I just need to train them, retrain them again when it's not so crazy. Today was very hectic. Um, mm -hmm. But um, so Pam is going to be able to do the payroll. Payroll, but Robin again. Robin is a Sign. only signer, okay. so she will mm -hmm. cut the checks. Um, Twelve weeks is the minimum that I will be. Um, and I don't want to say that I'm not. Don't even try and contact me because that's not okay. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some sedation moments that I'm just not going to be able to. <laughs> um, How long do you think you'll actually be in the hospital? 
Oh no! I mean, they're hoping that I can leave the next day. Whoa! But really? I have to climb mm-hmm. three stairs and I have to walk down the hallway. So we'll see. <sighs> we'll see. Hmm. Um, so I'm hoping just. So in your help. email, I couldn't tell if you were talking about twelve <clears throat> weeks before you can start PT and then twelve weeks more, or are you thinking twelve weeks total? I'm thinking in the long run, I want somebody to fill this position. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So. So, but now so we're at the point where it's too late to train somebody. Well, it's not I mean, too late to train, no. Two weeks. <laughs> well, right. But it's, yeah. it's, um, yeah. It's just repetitive. I mean, nobody's going to get this job and, and, unless they've, they've um, had frequency of government accounting mm. and, and uh, NIMRIC, using NIMRIC. I mean, mm. So... But it's trying to find somebody in this town that wants to be the treasurer because it's an elected position. Mm-hmm. Um, it, they can be appointed mm-hmm. right. um, to fill in. And you to, could hire, and to carry could out, hire someone. Right. Yeah. And to yeah. carry out my term, which that's until 26. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I'm you decide sure. you can't come back. I'm not. Or you don't want to. It's, mm-hmm. it's, um, I need to behave on this one. This is my fourth back surgery. And mm-hmm. plate and I can't screw this up, so I'm not going to push mm-hmm. it. Um, the other three surgeries were supposed to be 12 weeks as well, and I was back in <laughs> the following week just because that's me. So um, if we see you in the office, we'll tell you to go home. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. I gave her help before. Yeah. yeah she did. <laughs> but I need to um, retrain my own brain, in the, and that's going to be the hardest part. So. Mm-hmm. Oh. I hope it all goes well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It sounds like we should maybe think about if if, if nobody wants to step forward um, in town, but think about. But not feel to try to hire someone. Well, I don't know whether we make. She's not resigning. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, even short term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Tom yeah. can do uh, twice a month. He said, but that's not considering summer time. Um, he does bankrupt from home. Which is great. So that's my second checking over my work, making he's, sure everything. But he does it remotely. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he could come in twice a week and do, you know, before the select board meetings and do these bills. The warrants, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The bills and warrants. And the regrets he can do at home whenever. He does through home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is going to be additional work on Robin and Pam. Um, mm. Yeah. I guess what I meant is that maybe we should consider trying to hire somebody in the short term. Oh. For um, mm-hmm. and I don't know whether um, there's a way to look mm. into that. It seems like a there are big shoes to fill. Mm. So but for a small town that that um, yeah nobody's jumping or knocking at the door to. Right. I noticed Callis advertising for a treasurer, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Callis went. How long did they go for without a treasurer? I don't know how they I did it. They, were, they were lucky enough to get their old treasurer to come back for a year. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and they sat on their hands for a year, and now she's yeah, years expired, and yeah. they don't have anybody. <sighs> wow. Well, That's Sandra. Yeah. Sandra. Yeah. Yeah. She's really good. Hmm. I can ask her if she would be willing. To yeah, yeah. short term. Take Greensboro. She might take do another like 12 weeks. Be <laughs> <laughs> employee. It would be, it would, it would I'm not be concerned. Worth a question. I yeah. Ask her mm-hmm. if it was a part time thing. Mm-hmm. Just like a 12 week. She, I, I'm pretty sure she doesn't want so any, anything long term. I'm not concerned with the short term. I'm concerned with August when taxes, tax bills come out. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. when I'm concerned mm-hmm. when the chaos comes. Okay. Um, I'm not even concerned with. I mean, literally somebody could get by doing my job once a week Mm. to get payroll done and check in, but it's everyday stuff that the phone rings and questions and it's easy because I've been there so long for me to find the Mm. answer Mm -hmm. or I just know it in my head, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's fair to the town either. of the meds that they're putting me on now, I literally can't remember stuff. Mm. Um, and I don't think that's fair to the town. I screwed up two timesheets last week. <laughs> <gasps> <Yeah. laughs> Granted, I mean, 
I, mm -hmm. I will fix it next Monday. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not giving my full, so therefore I feel like, mm -hmm. yeah. So the people in town that we might know of, who you've probably already tapped into, like <clears throat> oh, the lady out on Buck Lake Road, but she's got a full-time job, right? And then there's, um, who am I trying to think of, a new uh, lister. She's got a full-time job, plus so she's a lister. Bonnie. Yep. Didn't know she was an accountant. Skip you to see this one. Or? I could talk to Jim Young. Yeah. That's a great idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, how about Evelyn? Oh, she wouldn't. She wouldn't? Absolutely not. No. no. She's no. happily retired. She doesn't get bored with it a while? No. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, Danielle would be perfect, but I don't know. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> well, if there's no objections, yeah. um, I hope the surgery goes well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Thanks. There's no objections. Maybe we move on. Uh, is the Wood, Woodbury Fireman's Auxiliary? Um, do we expect Paul to be here? For Not that? me. No. Just oh, fireman. thank you, Rob. <laughs> All right. The fireman's Auxiliary, not the fireman. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Want to tell us what the Fireman's Auxiliary is? It's a fund that the Myers created way back in the 70s, and they do the Bessie Drennan exhibit. Yep. Down there in Sanctuary Church. And what they do with the money that they raise, they give a $500 scholarship to a graduating Woodbury student. And they do up to four $250 scholarships for camps. It could be basketball, it could be Buck Lake. Buck Lake. And that's from Bessie Drennan, which is yes. not going to do anymore, right? Oh. Well, we're not just getting going oh, good. this year. Oh, good. Um, and you own the fire, you own the post office, The office, post office right? building. Yeah. And the area down here where the skating rink is, that's theirs. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do is get the little footbridge replaced that goes from the post office over through to the skating rink or up here to the school. So the, the auxiliary owns the to land on this side of the mm -hmm. bridge also. Yeah. Okay. Oh. You got an estimate on that? <clears throat> I've gotten one and I've got two more out there that I'm waiting to come in. Mm -hmm. And the one I have right now is around $4,300. Oh. Let's see, we're going to need a bridge on the other side of the road too at some point, but <laughs> to join two sections of our park. Mm -hmm. Part two. Okay. So what so I'm two here to be. ask for is to see if the town will be the financial officer. The middleman. For the... But you have your own money and stuff. You must have checking accounts and stuff we for the post account, office. Yes. So if they won't give it to you as a non-profit? That's interesting. Because mm -hmm. huh. I know they, the Woodbury Fund gives money to other non-profits. So that we, as you're asking, as a fiscal sponsor, sponsor our responsibilities mm -hmm. are to the to town's it, turn around and cut a check to them. Yeah, just sure. really not much of anything. And we've done that for yeah. the PTO. Mm -hmm. And the fire department. Fire yeah. department, we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything comes through us, but yeah, I have to turn around and just cut them a check. Mm -hmm. so. so it would go from the Woodbury Fund to the town and then to into the auxiliaries yes. account and then pay whoever does the work for it. crazy. I make motion that we do it. Yeah, I'm second that. No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Your motion passes, so Thank the you. town will be the fiscal sponsor for the Thank you. Woodbury Fireman's mm -hmm. And then now it's time to talk about uh, the library trustee position. Um, yep. Um, so I'm speaking for Stephen Murphy, who sent us an email um, requesting, and we have done this before, um, so I guess normally it would be the select board who would appoint new library trustees, mm -hmm. and Steve is requesting that we bestow that power to the library trustees um, to give, it, in this instance, I, he is not requesting it for every instance, I don't believe, but... He's requesting that um, right now they are trying to fill a position, um, and he's requesting that they be given 
the authority to approve somebody, which I sounds think good. sounds no, I don't good. Think, I think if it's our job to do that, we can. They could certainly look around and make a recommendation, but I don't think we should give them the authority to appoint people on their own board. That's kind they of already odd. did. I guess uh, he sent some emails, which I read um, briefly, but I believe we've already done it in the past. To the library, giving them the. That's but we appointed the the last person that needed to be appointed when they had an. We had uh, an opening last year. We had like three people. Mm -hmm. And we chose one. Mm -hmm. So if there, are, so th this person's already the role. Uh, what are you asking? They have somebody. Is that what you're saying? Do they have? Somebody? I I'm not sure if they already have somebody picked out or not. Um, it seemed for some reason like kind of time sensitive. Is that? Did you get it? I, like, it was really a long email, and I read it like really fast <laughs> when I was trying yeah. to get breakfast. It's just, it's, just because, it's just because Terry's passed away. Right. They yeah. want to get that position filled. Okay. Yeah. 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 So even but if they, like they, they get the person and they give you the name, you can right. still appoint it at the next right. meeting. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could understand why they would. I mean, I would prefer that they look around and do the work of, of finding someone and make a recommendation, but I still think we should make the appointment. So is the, is the confusion that, and just one yeah. second, Michael, is, is the confusion that um, Steve doesn't think, or the library doesn't think that they have the authority to go find that person to right. make a recommendation, I don't and know. that they are assuming that we are going to find that person, and therefore it's going to take a long time, because none of us are looking for that person? I don't know. That could very um, well be the case. Uh, I, yeah. I didn't read it. So yeah. maybe that's, we just need to get that clarification and go, get back to Steve and say, Sure. You, we're happy to appoint whoever you, we're going to listen to your recommendation. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I'd make a motion that we tell them that, that they please go and see what you can find for someone and bring us some recommendation and we'll make the appointment. I don't even we know if we need to make a motion for that. I think we, I don't think that has to be we just have to be kind we ask Steve or to to make a recommendation for us. Okay. Mike, so do you um, I know usually like in my um, experiences like with the Woodbury Conservation Commission or other town committees that um, usually the and I have a feeling that because the trustees are elected positions that if there is a uh, space that needs to be filled, that it would be the select board that mm -hmm. would make that mm -hmm. appointment. I mean, we could check with the LCT about mm -hmm. that. Um, it's just a simple mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. but and usually the other committees, which are all appointed to begin with, mm -hmm. um, they usually, in my experience, come up with a person and then make a recommendation to the select mm -hmm. board to appoint that person. That's mm -hmm. kind of that's been my experience with. Didn't Steve give, provide some wordage about what the statute says? I thought he, he did. He did. I did not memorize that. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't find it. All right. So it sounds like we just asked Steve to bring us a recommendation. And mm -hmm. I think that sounds great. Great. Yeah. Um, the recovery officers are poor. Skip. We've been busy past couple of weeks. Uh, uploads to the FEMA grants portal. I uploaded category Z labor for voluntary labor that was completed at the uh, town offices for the people who cleaned it up mm -hmm. you know during the day after the flood. And that totaled total $1,896. Uh, uploads to the FEMA grants portal uh, since we last met included Woodbury Rail Trail, North and South Parks, Old Quarry Road, and Blake Hill Road, which added material costs, labor costs, and equipment usage hours totaling $27,991. What's left to upload are Town Highways 23 and 24, those two mitigation projects, County Road Extension, Cabot Road, the speed radar sign that's still hanging around somewhere, town offices, and North Hattie Bell Road. So total essential elements of information documentation sent to FEMA as of April 5th totaled $309,502.80. So FEMA 
and the state of Vermont share total 97.8 percent. Mm -hmm. So Woodbury right now with the money that's in Grants Portal could expect reimbursement of $302,693.74. Mm. Woodbury's 2.2% share of that would be $6,809.06. So anyhow. 2.1%? Uh, 2.2%. Mm -hmm. So that's looking pretty really good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In the remaining projects total approximately $45,000 that still have to go up there. But most of it is the county road extension, which will, I gave Michael some information on that uh, before the meeting. So uh, also on April 3rd, I up uploaded two contracts for engineering services for Highway 23 and, and 24 for okay. permanent repairs. So we had a conference call with, with FEMA subsequent to that. And that set off alarm bells at yeah. FEMA because they looked at these contracts, and you know, I I looked at them too because Diana had given them to me. So these contracts are pretty concerning to FEMA because there's no start date, there's no end date. Mm -hmm. There's uh, one of the contracts, the project description is Town Highway 23 Culvert Replacement Design Services. And on Town Highway 24, it's Town Highway 24 Bridge Replacement and Design Services. Mm -hmm. So they're, to FEMA, they're two separate projects, but yet they're going to do the same thing. They're going to replace the bridges there. And whatever culprit work or whatever stream work that has to be done, essentially, it's, it's the same project, but it's worded differently. So they were concerned that we're just going to replace a culprit here and not replace a bridge. How are you going to do that? You know, so they were concerned about that. Yeah, I did ask the engineer why the one says culvert, and I didn't know if it was a typo or something, but it, he, he was right. It was a culvert to begin with. It was originally That doesn't culvert. mean that it's got to be a culvert when it's done. Right, but it, they just raised the flag because, yeah. you know, they, can, they yeah. can do that, and they do. Yeah, they might do a box culvert or something like that. Yeah, who knows? You know, that's, okay. yeah. I have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. So, and... Uh, so I sent an email, I think you, to you, Diana, about why there's no start and complete date on this. Because what I'm looking at is the uh, recovery office is to have these projects done by January 14th, 2025. And but you just said we can get an extension. Yeah, but however, <laughs> I'll talk about that later. <laughs> so Diana, you responded to me, there's no commitment for completing the work in the contracts. Yeah. So. To me, that raises another point. Okay. So if there's no commitment to complete the work, <laughs> how are we going to get this done? And, and you went on to say, what he said in the following email is the best I could get. And I don't know if this guy is slippery or just is too overwhelmed with work to yeah. confirm commitment date on it. <coughs> I can ask him for one. That's why I thought if we had an end date for, from FEMA, we could use that to push things along. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, FEMA raised that concern for both of these contracts. They're both the same engineering firm, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's Nate. Mm -hmm. yeah. he's, he's done a lot of work for the town. I don't think he's slippery. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm wondering if Skip should talk to Nate. That's a good idea. I think he'll sure. understand if I tell him. Okay. FEMA. All right. Well, well, and if, an he, if he isn't able to commit to an end date before the FEMA deadline, which I could understand might be the case, I'm if he sorry. gives you an end date beyond the timeline, you can apply for an extension. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, I cannot apply for an extension until December of this year for any projects that are going to mm -hmm. not be completed by January 14th. Mm -hmm. I cannot write for an extension now. I have to wait 30 days before that end date, which is January 14th, 2025. What he did tell me was that he um, plans to do the field work during the summer and have the engineering work done early fall so we can go back. But I can get so, some, put something on. So it's not going to be completed, obviously, because construction He said could be yeah, fitting in, in construction. Uh, very tiny. Late winter or late fall. Yeah. So if it, if it would be of any use, uh, I could send you what 
FEMA is looking for in their contracts. And that's part of this 232-page document. Mm. But it's broken down into like a five-slide presentation mm -hmm. that the state of Vermont put on. So mm -hmm. uh, it says state and local federal procurement, procurement rules must be followed. No sole source contracts. If the work is over $250,000, it must be competitively bid. Engineering must also be put out to bid. So I don't know if that engineering was put out to bid or was it just a sole source contract? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I understood that FEMA wanted us to comply with our purchasing policy. Well, we put that out to um, DeWolf. No, 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 not really. Not really. High. No. What we got from DeWolf was they basically oh, we'll did us a favor by, give, by giving us a number to throw against the wall. And uh, So what does that mean, Skip? If we didn't, it sounds like we didn't put it up to bid, the engineering. Well, yeah, it's, it's, we can get around that. Okay, this great. Time. Uh, awards to responsible contractors. So the government and a website called SAM.gov you can look for debarred mm -hmm. or suspended contractors. So they want to be sure that none of the folks we hire uh, have been debarred mm -hmm. or suspended. Uh, and again, applicants' request for proposals slash bids should provide clear and definitive scopes of work and monitoring requirements. Applicants should also obtain from bidders proof of insurance and bonding, copies of licenses, references, and financial records. And it goes on, blah, 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 blah. Types of contracts that they're accepting is uh, <clears throat> lump sum contracts, unit price contracts, cost plus fixed fee, and the contracts that you have to avoid are time and material contract. They don't want to see anything like that. And again, permanent work must be completed with 18, within 18 months. So the 18 month time frame again ends January 14th, 2025. And it says for extenuating circumstances or project delays beyond your control, the state has authority to extend it for up to 30 months. So mm -hmm. I can send you this if, if you think this might help. And I can send it to Brandy or Brandy's replacement if that might help. It's being very specific in their requirements. I'd like to see that. Okay. But yeah, I mean if you want if you want to call me, that'd be fine, but I'm also happy to <coughs> explain if there are specific things like um, Well the contract's already been signed. Oh. Well, that was guys, my question. So, so that so was that's, a, you know the horse is out of the barn for right. those two contracts. So, oh, yeah. And and FEMA will allow this project to move forward even yes. even though they're not happy with that. They're Just going happy. forward, we need to make sure that right. contracts are great. Okay. Well, like with everything else we've been doing this year, we're trying to hurry things along. Well, yeah. Uh, and get the best job done for the money. Yeah. So I talked with Andy Flagg today, who is a, a State of Vermont emergency management contact, mm -hmm. and he again reiterated that we can write for an extension. We can only write for those extensions for projects that aren't going to meet the January 14th deadline in December. <laughs> so I can see there will be a couple of them, yeah. like on Highway 23, 24, uh, Cabot Road extension. Maybe the speed radar signs, maybe? Mm -hmm. We should do it with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another eight months with that. Yeah. <laughs> because with a speed radar sign, see as it's not facing you as you're going south on 14, the sheriffs, if they write you a ticket, it won't hold up in court because you're not seeing oh, that 40 mile an hour <laughs> sign. You don't see a 40 mile sign. There's no until, sign at all. Until There's... you get down by my house. Yeah. Well, Thanks, Robin, that's good to know. <laughs> <Why? laughs> but there still should be a 40 mile an hour sign even if there's, there's just a warning sign there that you see when you're driving south yeah but the big one that was on the solar one yeah. is turned around so when yeah. you're coming north you have 40 miles on this oh. side you have 50 miles on this uh, side uh, oh. 
problem. So if Alfie pulls out the pass me, he can only do 40 and I can do 50. <laughs> Doesn't seem right. <laughs> so with that is, is a little more complicated than I anticipated. Uh, one, it's very high off the ground. Oh. So you can't just reach up and put your sign. It's, it's much higher than that. So you need a lift or something. You need a lift or, yeah. I don't think it's even safe with a ladder, yeah. for that matter. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the traffic control issue, which means we have to hire flag certified mm -hmm. flaggers. Um, so we can do that. It just hasn't happened because it's been winter. Yeah. And I feel like plowing snow is probably a little more important than putting mm -hmm. up speed signs mm -hmm. on a state highway. But what that should be, it should be the state highway. That's not that's not our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. That is that is not town of Woodbury's jurisdiction to put speed limits on state highway. Who did who did the work last time? Lafayette Construction. Yeah. They did the work, but so the forty permission. The forty mile an hour sign, state sign, is there. Yeah. It just has to be rotated <laughs> one hundred and eighty degrees oh. so it faces North. So oh. people going south can see it's 40 miles an hour. Oh. The radar sign itself is toast, and that'll be removed when Alfie installs the other one. So the 40 mile an hour sign you're talking about is on the same post as it the is, solar? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it just needs to be yeah. rotated. So but that's why a state, can't the state do that? That's a state. They should do that. Yeah. Fact, they don't want the town to be doing that. No. Oh, what? Yeah, okay. So when we install the original speed radar sign we had to write for a permit yeah. for the state to work in there right away, to have our contractor work in there right away. So we'll still have to do Why that. Why can't they do that for us? They probably would if we asked. Hmm. Hmm. You think they'd charge us? No. no it's their responsibility. Not. It'd be too I much trouble for us to charge the foreman down there and see. I don't know, it's probably the sign division's different than the, the actual highway division, but... Well, it's not like they have know. to, yeah, I mean, the, the yeah. speed limit is already approved. It's not yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, right. They just have right. to fix the sign. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Right. You know, my yeah, they've, got, they've got, the sign division has a bucket truck that they can put a man in and reach out. <coughs> they yeah. have, I mean, they have their yeah. sign for it. Yeah. Uh, so... I'll reach out to them and see if see if they can help us in any way with that. That would make Thank a lot you. of sense. Um, yeah. You know, because we've got the new the new sign. Mm -hmm. um, still needs to be programmed, which we've tried, but we've not had success yet. Mm -hmm. Do you think that'd be something that they would be expert in? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you can do it. I think so. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think it's a matter of calling tech service and mm -hmm. just helping help them walk us through it uh, or walk Skip through it. I'm going to pass that one to Skip. <laughs> 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 we tried. We, we, we we really effort, but it's just it's, it's above us. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good thing to get to get pushed forward and so we can, one get it off the list of mm. uh, FEMA projects mm. and and also stop people from speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, get it. Okay. Right. Do you have more? Okay, great. Oh, wait, there's more. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so during our, we got a meeting with FEMA last week. And uh, so FEMA has changed course now and how they, and the requirements for town documentation. Before last Thursday, the towns were compelled to send all their documentation to the FEMA grants portal, digitize all their documents, and send it up. Okay? And then from that information, FEMA would authorize the projects, obligate the monies, then the monies would flow from FEMA to the state and then, then to the treasurer, whomever that's going to be. So they've changed the way they, they're doing it now. And the FEMA project manager that we're working with said it's analogous to how you do your taxes. So when you file your taxes, you uh, assert that, you know, I paid this amount of tax, this amount of tax for this, and my deductions are like this, and you owe me X number of dollars. 
So, but you have to have backup for that. So he, again, uh, he said it's an analogous to that, but you need to have the documentation on hand when you get audited, and chances are you'll get audited. So we made the decision, Danielle and I, to continue as we're doing it, as the way we've been doing it, and upload the remaining five projects up into the grants portal, because once they're in the grants portal, it's not FEMA's responsibility. They have all this stuff there. They're not going to come to the, back to the town and say, hey, okay, where's this, where's that, unless they need additional information. So with that, we're going to continue with the other five projects that we have ongoing and just be done with it. You know, it's, I think it's easier to do it that way because as the project, you know, gets on and on and on, uh, you know, you may not have the same people doing mm -hmm. this. You know, it may change to Robin or to Alfie or Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me doing it. <laughs> and so, so these documents, where are they? So they're all in the FEMA grants portal. Also, they're backed up on an external hard drive. Uh, Danielle has established a Google Docs location, so it's up on the cloud. And it's also on a flash drive mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So once we finish everything, all the documents will be on a flash drive at the town offices and on a Google Docs that's accessible mm -hmm. by everyone. Can you say again what those five projects are? Somewhere here. County Road Extension, Two Bridges. Two Bridges, here we go. Town Highways 23 and 24. Those are mitigation projects. Mm -hmm. Cabot Road, Speed Signs, Town Office, Hattie Bell Road, and County Road Extension. So the uh, Town Highway 23 and 24 mitigation projects, projects we have now with a total cost of a million four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's just for, again for a place of, so that's that. for the two of them or that's for both each? of them. Both of them. Okay. So that was, well. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when we were doing the site survey, you know, the, uh, the folks with us doing the site survey were uh, surprised that on Town Highway 23 is a Class 3 road. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And there was only one house there. Yeah. And Town Highway 24, you know, is a driveway, a Class 4 road, and uh, one house. Mm. So we're willing to spend X hundreds of thousands of dollars for, for two folks. So yeah, pretty good. Well, when we first when the when we first got that million dollar uh, price, we were thinking, oh my God, if Woodbury has to pay twenty five percent of that, that would be crazy. But now it looks like we won't have to pay twenty five percent. But hopefully, it'll be a lot less. I mean, the whole thing will be less. Well, I'm hoping it will, especially if Alfie and crew can do it. <laughs> Maybe. Can we? I don't know. You can. It will depend on what the engineer yeah. says he wants. Mm. But they still have to go out to bid because it's still going to be. It really does have to go out to bid. Yeah. So the answer is the road crew can't do it. That's the final answer. It's mm -hmm. going to go out to bid. The town can't do it themselves. Mm -hmm. The town's not going to bid for them mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we can set a precedent and try it. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. So the money for the park over here, is that still in there? For the, the money park for the two? Park. The, yeah, that's all been uploaded. Okay. Yeah. That's still Everything in there in it. case we need it for, in yeah. case the bee trans grass doesn't grow. But, you know, no, no, that's that's work that we've already done. Yeah. No, that's, but, but we put in an estimate for repairing that, in case what V Trans we didn't know V Trans was going to do such a good job cleaning everything up. So we put in an estimate for what it would cost if we want to replace those trees or replace that fence or anything. So that's still in there. Right? That is a proposal from, I believe, Windy Ridge. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's in there. The proposal okay. was there. Okay. 
Okay, if monies are not. Might need money. not, might, yeah, yeah. might not need it, but. But the proposal is in there. Mm -hmm. All right, what else? Uh, so we talked to Andy Flagg today about mitigation projects and extensions. And he noted that extensions, again, are granted for good cause, up to an additional 30 months for project completion. A letter asking for an extension must be on town letterhead and uh, be received no later than December 14th, 2024, at Vermont Emergency Management. And the letter must make a compelling case for the extension. And when I told him about town always 23 and 24, and said that they are mitigation projects, she says that's a perfect excuse. It's what? It's perfect? Perfect. Oh. Because mitigation project, projects get drawn out because okay. FEMA is much more involved than mm -hmm. North Hattie Bell Road or speed signs or anything like that. I mean, if, uh, as far as mitigation, it would be good if the bridge was, you know, if the, they didn't blow out like they did the last couple times. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. But it's not gonna not gonna reduce the amount of water. It's just gonna make it flow easier <laughs> to be working right. down to the well, this, the engineer will make the spans wider. Yeah. So it'll be wider so that that uh. allows more room for water. Yeah. Or room for yeah. more water. It's still gonna be the same amount of water coming down. It just won't be disrupted by broken pieces of bridges and culverts run, running down the stream. Okay. So next up in the project, we have another conference call on April 11th with FEMA. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue essential elements of information documentation for the remaining projects. Any questions? Concerns? Super glad you're doing it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, really. Yeah, Danielle too. Yeah, she did. Extend mm -hmm. thanks to her. So, well, I'll be talking with her. And that's it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Alfie. Oh. Well, I'm thinking my report's going to be pretty boring from, compared to the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, So our new employee has started. He's working out great. Uh, got him on the grader. He's just taking that off. He's just doing great. Can't say enough good things about him. Um, we go from one extreme to another. I mean, less than a week ago, we had yeah, yeah. half of snow. Mm -hmm. And today, we're thinking about mowing our lawns. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just crazy. Mm -hmm. The roads seem to be a little bit like they're, they're, a, they're firming up. Yeah, something they're happened, fast. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think most of our frost is gone. There's still a few spots where it's shaded and whatnot. There's still a little mucky, but uh, we're in good shape. If we could just get some dry weather now to grade them, which we graded a bunch today. Uh, we were out on County Road today and, and uh, Perimeter Meadow. Um, but that, there's only so much you can do in, in one day. Um, but now we're looking at four days of rain. So we're going to be cleaning up trucks and hopefully taking plows off and putting them away. Would the next four days be a good time for me to go up? Yes. Look at you. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be in the shop quite off, quite a bit. They say there's not a chance of snow showers on Saturday. Oh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. We might just one truck with a plow on. We won't put them all away, right? right. Uh, but more so, just like the wings, we can take the wings off. Mm -hmm. If we do get anything, we can still plow the front plows. Mm -hmm. Uh, we already took the wing off the grader because it's kind of a nuisance to grade with the wing on there. It's hard to see and all that. So mm. um, I just ordered a load of chloride because it's inevitable we're going to have dust. And you know it's already. I mean, a, a couple of days after a snowstorm, we're already getting dry spots. You know, mm. so I've got that uh, on its way. Um, really all I've got to report. I have a couple of questions. Um, one is not a question, it's just uh, more for your information. April 29th to May 7th, 
I'm taking a vacation. And I'll be out of town. I'm still reachable by cell phone and email or whatever. Um, but I'll put a list together for the guys to work on while I'm gone, so activities will continue. What's your thoughts about road postings? It's just a, just a question. I mean, you have, and the poster says May 1st. In the past, I've always taken them down when I thought they were, when the roads are hard enough. Uh, I'm getting some people asking if they can travel our roads, and I have to tell them. I mean, now that it's warm, I, I can't use the, it's frozen. So hmm. I, don't, I don't know what, what your thoughts are. Are their granite trucks still not running? They've been running when it's froze. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't I seem pretty solid, right? I mean, where I've driven, I haven't really come into any mud lately, have you? I guess I'd, I would just recommend we leave it up to Alfie. <laughs> yeah. His discretion was... I agree. Yeah, another May 1st is another, like, three weeks. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Should be scrambling. I mean, in the past, in my past career, it's always been, you know, if the roads are right, you take the poster down. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not a. It's not a lot that they stay up the full term. Uh, I'm not quite ready to do it tomorrow or, or the next day, but I think, you know, because of this rain that's coming, if it was if it was full sun for the next week, I would say, yeah, let's take them mm -hmm. down. But with this rain, I'd rather keep them. Uh, probably for another week or so, and we'll see what, what the roads are doing mm -hmm. at that point. But they are firming up very well, okay. uh, i got to say. They're doing really well for, for that. Um, the other thing, I'm, I'm not real clear about work in the right-of-way. If contractors are working in the right-of-way, do we have a form or something that they have to fill out and get permission? Didn't we talk about that last year with the, the um, cable people? I mean, the CV fiber people? Mm. Is that what I you're referring to? Like a, a, yeah, if somebody's yeah. digging a water line or power line under our mm. road, um, there should be some sort of a permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, there I, is a permit. There's some, some kind of permit for work in the right of There isn't? Permit. No, it's a driveway permit. Like any, anybody can just go out and dig in the road? No, there's... Well, that's what I'm asking. I, I, I need should, clarification. Yeah. Cause no, there should I be... I think I've heard Greg talk about some sort of permit, but I just don't yeah, know. Yeah, there is a driveway. I think the one I'm thinking of is a driveway permit. That's the orange Yeah, that's the most common one that... Uh, yeah, you know, but... Yeah. but I might have something that is... I can look in our files at the office, too, and see yeah. if we have anything there. I think it was... That only makes sense if you're going to yeah. dig up the town road that you yeah. need to apply for a permit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's our infrastructure. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's doing it's it. Town hundred percent. No mm -hmm. oversight of it, mm -hmm. I think. And if, Robin, I think if you can't find one, then we need to make one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the other part of that is what if I'm the contractor? How do we want to deal with that, or do you forbid it, or what? I don't. I just apply for permit. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, most instances, the the homeowner would apply. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. For the for the permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it could go either way. Mm -hmm. So if so it's a driveway, that's one thing. But if it's like going across the road to put a power line or something, that's more complicated, right? And then you have to close the road and notify the yeah. people and all that. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and that's that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. But yeah. I, I don't understand what, where where the where the complication is. Um, In case I hired him personally, right? To dig the trench for to me. Dig a road, dig right. One. You would still apply for the permit, though. Right. But so have, see, he's a town employee, that's why... But now working as a town employee in that case, right? No, I'd be working on my own time. Yeah, so I guess I don't understand yeah. the... the where... I mean, if... Maybe I'm just really dense, but I don't see where it gets sticky. I just want clarification, because it's yeah. going to happen. Most mm -hmm. likely it's going to happen, and I don't want 
there to be a problem. You know, yeah. if it if it's too sticky, I'll just yeah. I'll just turn away and not do it. But I would like to serve some of the residents of Woodbury. We did ask when he when we hired him. We had this discussion about his business and not mm -hmm. wanting to get in the way of, of his business. We didn't really talk about doing no, business in Woodbury. No My only thought on that, I guess, would be like we wouldn't want to have you as the road commissioner sign off as to allow you, Alfie, to do the digging. Like maybe the select board should sign off on it, just so it doesn't mm -hmm. look like a conflict of interest. Uh, that's the only. Thing the I permit would go, probably go through the town clerk, anyways. Oh, okay. I would think. I don't know. Okay. And then if the town clerk yeah. is the applicant, then. <laughs> then, then, then there's a problem. Uh, <laughs> I think one thing we ran into in Worcester, and and, and I think that this, this was re resolved pretty quickly, is there was concern about the road crews um, selling their work while they're on the job. Mm -hmm. And that would, I could see like being a little bit, uh, you know, you see a problem and you roll up and you say, hey, I can take care of that for you later. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. that, that was a little bit of an issue um, that got resolved pretty quickly. But um, it doesn't sound like that's the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, no, I don't. I don't solicit myself. I mean, I've, I've, right. I've built a reputation. People know me already, yeah. and so I'm not doing that. But it, it does mix. You know what I mean? It does mix, and that's what, where you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't want to be out there with my personal excavator digging up a town road, and then say somebody says, "Well, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Who are you working for? What you know?" I'll ask all these questions. I want I want it to be okay with the select board. Uh, before that happens. So well, since you all have a, like yeah. an assistant road commissioner, I guess we should be the ones that would would approve that when you come to us with a plan or the owner mm -hmm. comes to us with a plan. Or whoever would sign the permit, like if it's the town clerk, I don't know who would be the person to sign it. I just think it shouldn't be you that signs the permit well, just because it would look bad, right. but right. that's my mm -hmm. only thought on it. Yeah. And all the building permits, who, who signs those? They don't all come before the select board, right? No, the zoning administrator signs those. So maybe that um, would be a simple. What about the no. driveway permits? That's, is that a rule? No, the garage did those. That's yeah. Yeah. Ah, That's the right. that no, but the select board signed the, the driveway permits. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think I remember doing that. Yeah. So if we find maybe the select board there then does sign many. those permits. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm think, thinking about the driveway permit. I don't remember seeing a... We haven't had many. No, select board oh. signature on Dan's driveway permit. Oh, it may not have. It may have just have been the road crew. Or the road foreman, I'm pretty sure. For, for access. Yeah, it used to be the road foreman would sign it, and then I thought that the select board did too. But I don't know. No, I think, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> a file full of them, and then... Yeah, there, so. I mean that's partially why I'm bringing it up because it seems mm -hmm. things are a little bit loose in that mm -hmm. in that department, mm -hmm. and I just I don't want to be the guy that's looked at like taking advantage because I'm not I'm not interested in that. It sounds like we have to tighten up our our system, and then once that's tightened up, you shouldn't have any problem. Is there anything in a new personnel policy that would address all these concerns? Mm, I don't think we went there. I think what's in a new personnel policy is sort of like working on town time on a different, I think there is a conflict of interest or conflict, some, something in there. Yeah, there is a bunch of stuff about conflicts of interest. In there. there is yeah. a section on that. It's more to do with um, the old policy had requested that town employees um, talk to the select board before taking on any other job and we actually nixed oh, that because yeah. it just felt like it was invasive of their own free time when they're not on the mm -hmm. clock so yeah. that's out of there um and there is a section about conflict of interest but i don't mm -hmm. know that it's like super relevant to this no. so i guess does it sound like we'll just try to tighten up our 
system yeah. here. Yeah. So then, we gotta get a permit or find find or we'll see create one. Yeah, we'll Hopefully we have right. one, and if we okay. don't have one, we'll develop one. Okay. And then in the meantime, I guess just yeah, it let could us be the, the the what we call a driveway permit could be a permit to do work within the right of way. I don't remember what the actual title. Would there be like a procedure? So like if you have to dig up the whole road and it's gonna prevent cars from coming through for however long it's dug up. Is there a procedure in place for like notifying people X number of days ahead of time or you know just making sure that people aren't stuck yeah. when able to get Well, you'd have to do the front porch forum is probably the, the best way. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. what I would do if I was closing the road for the highway crew to do, to do a repair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what the town has done in the past. Or let the okay. neighbors know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, fire department, the, mm -hmm. the emergency crew. Thanks, anything else? Uh, unless there's questions, I think I'm good. The roads look good? They're rough right now. But yeah, everybody gets slow, though. That's good. But they're getting better. They are getting much better. Yeah. Keeps the speed down. I like yeah, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Moving on, it's uh, the report on the Buck Lake Brook site visit. Michael, Alfie, and Skip. It was exhausting. You were all there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah um, see, um, so there was Ben Matthew, who is a stream permit person. Um, he, um, there was Chris Sire, I think I see why I'm not quite sure how that is pronounced. Um, he's our new District 6 rep, which we're part of oh. VTrans District 6. And there was a fellow named Keith Friedland, who is the person that would be doing the H and H, the hydrology mm -hmm. and hydraulic study. There was Skip, myself, and Alfie. There was also a person, um, Lincoln Frasca from CVRPC, and Ron Rathburn was there. Um, I think that was That's it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at the um, two um, town highway 23 and 24 for the bridges. Um, I had originally requested that Ben also um, kind of review the whole Buck Lake Brook as it goes through the village and up the hill to um, uh, to Carol Ray's <coughs> for some um, stream mitigation work far into the future that um, the Planning Commission is is uh, thinking about. Or, um, so it was kind of a double purpose uh, visit. <coughs> um, Focusing on the bridges and the FEMA work, and also some, perhaps some future um, mitigation work on the brook itself to try to uh, keep the village from flooding in the future. Um, so I think, Skip, you were able to kind of get word from Keith. Or, <coughs> sorry, my mouth throat was getting dry. Um, about um, the end of the H&H uh, &H study that's needed. I mean, we try to impress upon him that please do this as soon as you can. Right, and he indicated right. he would <coughs> he would do it as soon as possible. And that's Keith who? Keith Friedland is his name. Mm -hmm. He is another V, he's a V-trans um, person. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. I do have his official title mm -hmm. um, at home, but I don't have it in my head. Mm -hmm. He's worked with FEMA before in other projects like this, so he knows what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we get the H and H study, I'll send that to FEMA, mm -hmm. and uh, that's again part of the Town Highway 23 and 24 mm -hmm. mitigation project. So that'll be just another document mm -hmm. among many that they'll need for these two projects. Also, that starts the ball rolling. The H and H studies, mm -hmm. and from that you can do an engineering study. Mm -hmm. That I presume the town's going to hire an engineering firm to look at, you know, what exactly is required. But you know, isn't, that, isn't that what we did with those two contracts you were just looking at? Not that I could see. It's they're not for engineering work. Well, I don't know if they're going to recommend, you know, the type of bridge and the requirements for the bridge. I didn't see that in the book. Oh, of course they are. That's what it's about. Yeah, that's what that's all about. Yeah, okay. I think that's what we're doing, yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna 
work off of the H and H, H, &H study. Right. Because the H and H will give him yeah. size yeah. and the mm -hmm. amount of water that's right. gonna flow through there. And then he'll build the structure to consume that water. Mm -hmm. So he needs that study before he, he can this, this is like this is the first step. The H &H he knows is the first that the state's going to do that. And that's why we stress: uh, can we get this as soon as possible so mm -hmm. we can get it to our engineer and move forward with that? And what did he th think? I mean, I guess we're still going to have to apply for this extension no matter what. Right? It, it, yeah. There's no way it, this no is way. happening until. So spring at the earliest, right? right? Well, yeah. unless unless the engineer can get us a design. Mid summer, mm -hmm. but he's already recommending late mm -hmm. summer. Yeah, they fall. Right. And so then we have to put it out to bid. Mm -hmm. And then it has to go to bid. Yeah. And winter projects, I just tell you, they're not. It's mm -hmm. not. You've seen what happened out here. It just everything costs more. It takes longer. It's just mm -hmm. not a good yeah. idea. We like winter projects, don't we, Chris? The reason why I was confused about it, it says nothing in these contracts about bridges. It just prepare a final cost estimate and prepare final plans. So what what are what are in the plans? There's project bridge replacement TH24. Right, and if you look at the next one, culvert replacement TH24, same thing. Prepare plans, prepare final cost estimate. Oh yeah. But the the preparing the plans, I, I think that is the engineering. Right. I think that is. Yeah. yeah. Then, the plans yeah. themselves are what 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 we would provide to contractors right. to bid on. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't really spell that out. I'm yeah. Just drives me crazy. When it's not <laughs> <laughs> prepare the final plans for the uh, structure and design for the bridge. You know, yeah. The supporting. Yeah. You know, yeah. a little more granularity, I think, in the contract. Couldn't hurt. Would have helped yeah, a lot. couldn't hurt, for sure. FEMA's rubbing off on you. <laughs> well, yeah, we, didn't, we don't have the kind of skills here to write our own contract. Well, so some we of, use some something of. that, uh, that uh, was a standard contract. Sorry, Al. Some of the provided. vagueness in those contracts might be because of we don't have the H&H &H studies. So he doesn't really know, is it a culvert, is it a bridge? He doesn't know what he's designing yet right. as far as the flow. Well, yeah. but yes, yeah. bridges have to go anyhow because they're not ours. So right. correct. Yeah. So but they, the final they, fix could be a culvert. Could be a box box culvert. culvert, yeah. Could not a bridge, be, yeah. You know. So he doesn't really know exactly what's going in until until he gets the dimensions that the H and H is going right. to provide for mm -hmm. us. Once we get that, then he can mm -hmm. determine. And I think the town has some say in what we do too. I think we should work closely with him as far as what's decided, mm -hmm. what goes in there, whether it's a box cover, a pipe arch, or a bridge. What what it is, I think mm -hmm. is you know we'll have to look at that by you know what size and what's available and what's uh, most feasible for for us. Mm -hmm. All right, just looking at time. Is it okay if we move on to Michael's? Um, the next thing is the update on the local mitigation plan. Um, so, um, just a, a quick update um, the RFP um, for a contractor consultant to. Um, uh, pretty much do the local hazard mitigation plan for the town with with um, local um, you know town input of course um, is out. Um, there's a due date of April 18th um, for and we sent the RFP out, um, put it in the Times Argus, um, and then I sent it to um, a number of contractors that were whose names were given to me by um, the Department of Public Safety. Um, and we, I received three responses of people that um, were going to submit um, uh, bids. Mm -hmm. um, there were, I think there were seven people that I sent it out to. Uh, so three of those people responded. Um, and there may be others that just didn't respond to me. One person did respond telling me that um, 
they would not be able to do that. Um, so a big question um, for the kind of uh, committee that's formed right at the moment is um, would the select board like us to review the bids and then recommend who to um, award the contract to or would, um, would you folks like to open up the bids? We don't know any of these contractors either, so um, we could. You'll know what what you're looking for when you look at the contract. You should have some idea what you're looking for as yeah, far as there, there was compared very, to how much I know. With the RFP, <laughs> um, you know, from the grant agreement, there was a very detailed scope of work. Mm -hmm. um, that um, so yeah, and that's what we, mm -hmm. and we did have criteria that we sent with the RFP. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we do know what we're. What we're looking for um, based on those criteria. You think it would be nice to have that? What is it? A committee? A subcommittee? Or yeah, I'm that? calling it the the uh, local hazard mitigation plan executive committee. Okay. We're basically doing the pre work once the uh, uh, contract has been awarded. Um, we definitely want more people involved. Um, but we did appoint that committee, right? You did. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You guys will have a more narrow focus on it, so I think it makes sense to have you look it over and make a recommendation to okay. us. Mm -hmm. All right. And you'll provide a rationale for your recommendation, I yes. presume. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great yeah. to me. Okay. Um, and let's see. I know we'll be meeting tomorrow night, actually, to start uh, work on um, reviewing the contract from 2018. Um, so try to have that contract ready. When we know who's granular language, right? <laughs> this is a FEMA thing, also. So, um, so uh, mm. we'll have you review it on the Although um, Norman Eckin is pretty, pretty granular too. He is. <laughs> <laughs> please. please. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much it on the local hazard mitigation mm -hmm. plan. Um, things in the process. And, we're thinking it'll probably take about a year to do. Um, and in the interim, um, the town is still good um, for, with FEMA if something were to happen, like another flood um, this summer. Um, however, our percentage, the town percentage, would be a little bit less that we would be, or a little bit more um, that we'd be we would have to kick in on any projects. So hopefully there won't be any disasters until this is done. It's not much, it's like seven and a half percent, but when the price gets high, that is a fair amount. There, our present hazard mitigation plan ran out in February of this year. So, um, but the fact we're working on it um, helps yeah, with FEMA's consideration. So we do want to get it done as quickly as possible. You said April 8th was the end date for the? April 18th. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, the end is a week from this coming Thursday. Yeah. Okay. That's when the bids are due? That's when the bids are due. And we'll probably meet um, shortly after that. Because I think the next select board meeting is the 20, or whatever the Monday is. I was going to say the 25th, mm -hmm. but that's 22nd. 20, yeah, 22nd. 20, yeah. 22nd. Okay, so we'll probably try to meet before the select board meeting so that we'll have something to recommend. Mm -hmm. so, um, and that's it. That's it for the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, the review and approve the application for a 4,000 mini grant from the Municipal Energy Resilience Program. So that's, that's also Michael? Yes. Um, we talked about it at, our, at the last select board meeting. Um, and basically, um, what's needed now is for the select board to um, review the application, um, which I did send to you all um, mm. last week at some point, mm -hmm. um, and then approve it. We have till May 21st, so there's no rush. Um, we don't have to do that tonight. Um, we're, you know, we are. It's already almost eight o'clock. I don't remember what seeing that application. Okay, well, I, I, did, I did saw send it. it come through. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Would it be Look possible for, it. for us to print it for the next meeting? I have one copy printed right now. Um, okay. But yeah, um, 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could have the town clerk print them out. Here's one printed copy if you would like. I didn't print all of the regular state stuff that's kind of boilerplate um, cause, just because I didn't want to crank out another 12 pages of stuff. Um, so that's, need, that's the basic uh, grant agreement, and, yeah. and uh, um, we just need to review it. We don't yeah. need to fill it out. This is the grant that you were thinking could possibly give us a plan for both the town hall and the town office. This is yeah. The I, I was at the last select board meeting. I was talking specifically about the town hall, mm -hmm. um, but um, you know we're, we're we'll be giving a certain amount of money, and if we can stretch it a bit and, and include the town office, uh, that would be great. That's mm -hmm. what we would try to do. Um, it would basically be. Uh, using the money to hire a consultant to do uh, you know, a, a much thorough audit of the town hall to figure out how we can make that thing uh, usable year-round uh, mm -hmm. for heating and insulating and, and whatever else uh, we would need to do. And we could include in the application the um, contract the uh, town office also, and then see if the contractor feels that they can do that within the amount of money that, that they'll have to, to work with. That, that's within the $4,000? That would be, a, yeah, we'd have to see if the contractor would be... And we already have this thing from the, that Fitzgerald report for the, I'm talking about the town office. The town office, yeah. How old is that, Diana? Oh, a couple of years. Okay. I know, Brandy, you originally applied for this, because um, they had that on their records, and then I, I think it was just, at that point, they had all these requirements for reporting, um, yeah, and, and it's much simpler now, so, um, and I know you were inquiring for the town office, not the town hall, so. Right so at the moment. Well, just to put, yeah. but the four, but the, excuse me if I get confused, but the $4,000 mini-grant is for um i thought it was supposed to be for like forming an energy committee and having meetings those and are like possibilities that. for that but i did check with the person who oversees this grant and i explained the, what the town was thinking of doing for the yeah. town hall okay. so that would yeah. be perfectly yeah. fine okay before you so. do that i mean we do have the report that we hired a historical preservation <clears throat> expert to do on the town hall too did, did so. he Consider the energy. And yeah, I mean okay. that wasn't an energy audit, and but it was cons it was a study of what what we could do to right. make the building more usable mm -hmm. yeah. okay. within the historic situation. Right. Yeah. So I, with this one, it's it's you know it's a municipal energy resilience program, so they're going to be more interested mm -hmm. in heating, um, keeping that heat in the building, insulating, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. so. But the, whoever we hire will have to also be aware that it's a historical building. So, Michael, b before the next meeting, you just need us to re have reviewed this and to have make, make a motion that we approve it, or is that? Yeah, okay. and then you, you folks would be signing it. Okay. So, yeah, and we have made till May 21st. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's on the next agenda. Good, good idea. Thanks, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, sorry, sorry, one more thing. Is this the Planning Commission that's doing working on this? Or yeah. Is there going to be we'll, over, okay. we'll oversee it. So it seems as though we have some appointments to make. Um, yeah, I did get uh, a couple of approvals. Uh, Kim Silk agreed to be the pound keeper again and the dangerous buildings officer. And I believe Michael Gray said you were willing to join the Transportation Advisory Committee. If no one else was stepping up to it. and oh. So I, I would prefer that you still try to find someone. I'm, oh, okay. I'm kind of booked pretty tight here. I bet. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it is just a once a month okay. meeting. It's more just advisoring. Yeah. It's an advisory role that CVRPC mm -hmm. does for VTrans and their different projects. But, um, but I, you know, maybe I can convince somebody on the planning commission to, hmm. to step up. 
Do you want us to hold off on appointing you then? And yes, please. Okay. <laughs> I will do it if, if you know if nobody else will. I will do it. Thank you for being willing. We do have a uh, uh, young lady who's interested in being the town health officer, and I've been planning to get together with her to pass along the town officer manual that was in that box of wonderful stuff that you left at the mm -hmm. town office. I have that Her husband came in and picked one up today. What? Her husband came in and picked one up today. Picked one up, one what? The, the, one. the um, there isn't one. The health officer book? Yeah, they've got another one? It's always great if you do. It, I printed it off the health department website. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, good, because see, she was saying they did, they had a problem getting there to the office to pick it up. So I said, just come to my house. They live right up the road. But. That was last week when they had the snowstorm. <laughs> because they called down to the so office. So anyways, hopefully, okay, good. So she, I read through that book and there's really not a whole lot that the health officer can do, has, has jurisdiction over, mm -hmm. unless, not just because somebody doesn't have adequate sewage disposal, but whether that inadequate sewage disposal is affecting somebody else or the public. So it's not as scary. I mean, there's a, a lot of landlord stuff. We don't have a lot of that here, but, you know, asbestos and lead paint and water supplies and things like that. We don't have a lot of rental properties in town, so that doesn't happen. Yeah, I was involved in, yeah, I know in you my did that one default thing. select board mm -hmm. chair yeah. role, um, yeah. Chris. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> in a me. landlord situation. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. fortunately, yeah. our neighbor, the health officer in Calais, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. assisted me with that. Mm -hmm. And basically, I just watched what so he did. So hopefully, when she reads <laughs> that, she'll realize that there's nothing to be real scared of. I'm not sure what she does for work, but I think she's some kind of a social worker, maybe. So we still don't have an uh, animal control officer. We don't have someone who wants to be the rep to the CV Solid Waste Management District. We, I forgot to write this one, but HCTV, Harbor Community TV, would probably welcome a, a board member from our town. The town energy coordinator, we've wanted one for a long time. And I did reach out for the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail Committee to have um, someone basically bring that committee back to life. Um, Peter, and I don't remember his last name. Alberson, or I don't yeah, know if I'm saying it right. He was interested, he responded to that email that I sent out, and he is interested in, and I don't know if he actually lives here. I don't think he does, but anyways, I was hoping, Lizzie, that you might say that you wanted to. I am like so okay. <laughs> spread too thin. I'll, um, Sorry. I'll make a phone call to Eric again. I know you sent it to him. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and see yeah. if I can twist his arm. Okay. Um, is, the, the other question I had is, is it possible that we send, make another post on Front Porch Forum that these are positions that we're still looking for? Yeah. I mean, a lot, I would think that a lot of folks in town have no idea yeah. that yeah. these, that, that we haven't filled these. And maybe if we just put a... You mean they don't run for all... Watch HCTV. I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, maybe just something like that. A, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll a, work a on post, that. Yeah. And then okay. maybe we'll get some mm. some interest. Okay. So I guess I would entertain a motion to appoint Kim Silk uh, pound keeper and dangerous buildings officer. So moved. So moved. Discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Kim Silk is now the pound keeper and dangerous buildings officer. Did you have Pam do those letters? Yep, I'll have her do them up tomorrow. Thank you. Yep. Uh, other select board business to s discuss and adopt uh, rules of procedures. We yeah. went through that last time and we decided we would kind of adhere to the small boards. Um, I had a, I had a, a problem, a technical <coughs> problem and lost all of my Woodbury files last week. Uh-oh. Yeah, and so I've been trying to catch up. Um, Do I could not... Table this till yes. next, yeah. next meeting? Yeah, take these. I had this other one from the town of Waitsfield that I thought was interesting. Yeah. And I tried to look at them side by side, but I really didn't do that yet. And I also couldn't find this to use as a shell. 
So that means I'll have to. <laughs> you had marked Whenever I need something. Yeah, I, need I have to. one marked. Um, yeah. This one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I now can't remember. I think most of, most that, of it we had yeah. gone with what I circled, but I can't remember if there was any that we didn't. Um, I might have to catch up with you um, this week. Um, Feel free to. Look, if you want to. I feel like I went through this before. It was only oh, one yeah. I fit. We did really briefly last night on the way to uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. On, on our way out of the meeting. Scat, thank you. Sent in. It's yeah. kind of like FEMA has also infiltrated v trans so right. they can't just FEMA has infiltrated v trans FEMA's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see that. So yeah. there's a form. Yeah. 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 But anyway, it's like, 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 like this is Sure. Yeah. From like from 2016. Project thing. And this one from the foundation is here. Oh, I'll, I'll of discussion of each mm -hmm. and then the part of so yeah, I think that the last time one addition that he would and maybe you had the same okay. thing the same notes we went through this, this. Yeah. Yeah. Liz's yeah. copy yeah. so that part and, and I remember the and um Don we would be where, where there was a choice of do or don't they will yeah. want to know that right and then I think that yeah, which the only we went with everything that Liz suggested and fixed up we changed at the so, conclusion you know, of discussion of each agenda item, but before any action is taken, the public body well, at each meeting there may be a uh, this week. Any, any time this uh, five minutes afforded for open meeting. public comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. 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 This is the only one that you know we went through. Um, okay, yeah. Page four. Last page. Okay. And at the top, number two. <laughs> Okay. Why is it only two again? Oh, it's like that section. Okay, yeah. we said what there? We said that um, <clears throat> at the conclusion of discussion. Okay, yeah. Yep, and that uh, by majority vote, the by may increase the time for open public comment. So here, majority. Majority vote. And then. Um, and that there may be a five minutes afforded for open, that, uh, but before any public action is taken by the public body at each meeting, there may be a five minutes afforded for open public comment. Is that on here somewhere? It's right here. We, we enter the okay. number. Oh, okay, yeah. five minutes. Okay, well, I'll continue trying to find this on the LCT, you know, it's really, you have to sign on there, and I don't have a mm -hmm. problem signing on, but then when I, I can't find stuff, it's really hard to find stuff. I don't even know where it's on this. But. So we're going to table that until next yeah. meeting. Um, and then uh, apparently we are to discuss the need for a tax map update. Yeah, the uh, uh, Lister was um, approached by a company that does tax maps update and we haven't had our tax maps updated for a long time it's probably been seven or eight years they were done by the regional planning commission um and they haven't been updated that they just update them by basically writing on the paper maps so updating them is not a bad idea uh, i'm going to have to get back to the person who called ron and find out what he's talking about, you know, some kind of proposal for how much money we're talking. Now, the, uh, our tax department uh, representative who helps the listers, uh, she said that the money for that can be taken out of the listers education fund, which is, which is a fund that very rarely gets any use. It's, uh, Right now, it's got uh, Lister's Education Fund. It's got like, I can't really tell. It's got. Where do you find this? Yeah. On the last page. The last page. $10,527 in it. I don't think it gets used. I mean, the Lister's are going to do, I'll do a two day training in the near future. I suppose their hourly wages could come out of that. But, anyways, you, if the money's there and we can use it. <clears throat> That's probably worth looking into, but for now it's just a mention of something to 
keep an eye out for. Yeah. Okay. In what way would they be updated? Like, would it just be the information on the map itself that gets updated, or um, like the map lines? Obviously, the property parcel boundaries won't change. Right. Yeah. They, there's not much that can be done with those, but uh, unless they find problems, mm -hmm. but there are like subdivisions that might have happened, and okay. the Westers have been going just going down and putting a line on the map, which is really not survey gotcha. worthy, but it's... it's a, or somebody could have bought the abutment property, so then it's a it's one. bigger lot than yeah. two smaller yeah. lots. Yeah. 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 There could be subdivisions that have happened and since yeah. the... Uh, so this would just update all that stuff. Yeah. What was okay. the last time they were updated? Boy. I'm thinking 2017, maybe? I don't know. We've got the, the paper maps are there on the table in the office. And this isn't something that will automatically happen when the reappraisal happens. No, right? but it would but if we have that, that would help the reappraisal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna reach out to the person who suggested yeah. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Just to follow up. Um, and I think the next item is an executive session I'm for not sure we personnel. Need one. I'm not sure we need one. Do I we? think we do. Okay. Yeah. yeah and uh, the stuff I think we'd like to invite Alfie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we go into executive session now. It's uh, eight ten. Um, there's no one two. Open meeting law number one BSA three one three eight three regarding. Appointment, employment, or evaluation of a public officer or employee. We're going to invite Alfie to stay. 